um, whole thing about seizing private assets because they may know Putin or something like that. So we're not talking about government assets. Uh, this has been promoted by uh, Bill Browder. And he was Edmund Saffer's partner in Hermitage Capital, which was, uh, I believe, the, the lead entity as far as uh, in, <clears throat> involved in, in going after Yeltsin and trying to seize control of, of Russia back in 2000. Um, and the real thing here is that I think Bill Browder, in, I believe, is just the wrong person to ask because I think this is just really a grudge match between him and, and Putin. But uh, when you start seizing private assets, I mean, these people just don't even consider the fact that they're going to do the same to everybody else. So um, the worst thing here that they don't even consider is honestly, I mean, I've been advising governments and, and multinational corporations for 40 years. And one of the, the top, you know, probably the first question you ask is country risk. So I would never put somebody in like Iran or something like that where your assets could be, um, you know, seized, you know, nationalized. So now, you know, honestly, if I had to advise somebody in China, I'd have to say, look, there is now currency risk in the United States and Europe. Uh, if there's a dispute with China, they might, who knows, seize your personal assets. Um, so, I mean, this is just crazy. I mean, you, you know, you don't do this. I mean, all right, fine. You want to put sanctions on government to government. That's one thing. But going after private assets and things of this nature where there were anybody supposed to be entitled to due process of law i mean to seal you know seize that yacht and say oh well you know he he owns an oil company and he's friends with putin that's not good enough all right and this is really insane so now what's happening is that it's kind of like the same thing with with COVID, where people were just panicking and, and you know, wearing masks and didn't know why and things of this nature. Uh, now we have people, you know, basically anybody that's Russian, they're being kicked out. Um, the New York Met just, you know, fired a, one of the Sopranos there because she's Russian. And, you know, you have in London, they <clears throat> the landlord kicked out Gazprom, which rented, you know, uh, office space there. That's where their traders were to participate in the financial markets there uh, for energy. Uh, you have all these things are just going on. And it, it's total insanity. So they are really at this stage completely collapsing the world economy. You have Apple and all these other, there's over 300 American companies in Russia. I mean, their assets are going to be seized. You know, they're all now in, in a panic mode to get out. Um, and you're going to see the same situation develop with China. I mean, this is insane. It really is insane. You just don't do this. I can't believe that these governments have listened to this sort of an advice. Uh, it, it is really, really disastrous because, you know, what creates world peace is not nuclear weapons. It's, it's, you know, economics, basically, as long as everybody benefits, then you're not going to bite the hand that feeds you. And when you start cutting off trade like this, on both sides, all right, then there is your, you're wiping out the global economy. And that is what has provided peace, basically, since World War II. You have the State Department, sorry, you got to, you got to say something else, go ahead. No, but I mean, it's, it's just, you know, totally insane. And, and then when the governments have um, put in, you know, removing, you know, Russian banks and the government from SWIFT, I, I should point out that um, there's something wrong with the SWIFT system because when Obama threatened to do that, when uh, Putin went in into Crimea back in 2014, SWIFT stood up and said no. We're not going to engage in, in political uh, warfare here. 
And there's a new head of SWIFT that came in in 2019, and he had no problem. Now, the stupidity of this is that China has, you know, for some time been working on an alternative uh, to SWIFT. Now they're in high gear. And I, I think you're going to be shocked at how fast it's up and running. So you're going to see the division of the world economy is coming uh, at light speed, really. Uh, by 2023, I don't see this basically backing off. And <clears throat> once you've undermined the uh, global financial economy, uh, then you remove the benefits uh, from everybody, and then it does turn to war. Oh, yes, because there's no downside. Exactly. There may be a huge upside. If we win, we control it. Well, you know, the, the <clears throat> my concern here is that, I mean, there are a lot of uh, valid rumors flying around. I've spoken to Ukrainians, and they think that Zelensky is a puppet. Uh, and, I mean, it, it, he first asked <clears throat> for NATO to send in troops. That, they rejected that. Then he asked for uh, jets. Uh, they rejected that. And now, you know, he, he asked for uh, for them to create a no-fly zone over Ukraine. They just re rejected that. Now, <clears throat> the question becomes, and, and this has not gotten a lot of press, but uh, there was a security conference in Munich. Uh, it took place on February 20th. And for some unknown reason, they, you know, the White House sent uh, Camille Harris, and <clears throat> she blurts out that uh, Ukraine should should basically join NATO, and that is the number one issue <laughs> why Putin has invaded. I mean, it's just it's mind boggling uh, when. Uh, the Soviet Union fell in 1991. All right, there was what is called the uh, Budapest Agreement. Now, you, you know, you can Google it and, and, and look, but you ended up with all these <coughs> former Soviet states. And Ukraine, uh, which also people don't, most people rarely, you know, even think about. But Ukraine had more nuclear weapons than China. It was the third largest nuclear force in the world. Wow. And the, <clears throat> the Budapest Agreement was all about they gave up all their nuclear weapons, surrendered them. And the agreement was that NATO would not invade and Russia would not invade and they would remain neutral. So for Harris to even remotely put up this idea that oh, you should join NATO, is a, is a flagrant violation of the Budapest Agreement. Uh, and at that stage in the game, uh, you know, you, you, you're, you are inviting Putin in. Uh, so if you're not going to hold up that side, then why should he hold up the other side? Uh, I mean, you, know, you have to wonder, it, it was this just outright stupidity or is this a was some sort of diabolical plan to create war? I mean, I mean, you have to wonder. I mean, we've got the honestly the stupidest people in governments everywhere, and I'm not just bashing on on Biden. But oh, well, uh, thank you, Klaus Schwab, for your fantastic school of leaders. Yes, uh, they're all indoctrinated with just him and his economic philosophies. I mean. Um, I said, I've got some Ukrainian friends and they feel that Zelensky's just a puppet, that, you know, he's a comedian. He has no experience in any of this stuff. You, you look at M Macron, you look at Canada, you look at New Zealand, uh, Australia. I mean, wherever they have been World Economic uh, Forum people, you've had the most draconian uh, governments in, in history. And, um, you know, I, I've at least, you know, I've <clears throat> actually the guy that uh, 
did the film on me, he also did the film on Schwab, uh, Mark is Better. And um, so what happened is that, I mean, I, you know, have actually shaken hands with Schwab. I mean, so I'm not making up something that's uh, from the sideline here. But <clears throat> Schwab has a, uh, a very authoritarian role that he uses in, in the World Economic Forum. And, and it's a zero error tolerance. So you make one mistake, you're gone. So this is his autocratic idea. And you see this, you know, metastasizing basically uh, in New Zealand, uh, Australia, you see it in, in Canada. Um, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. And, and I mean, it's the, the, the thing here that people have been concerned about was that Schwab has been very methodical about trying to get his economic theories, you know, uh, adopted. And so that's what the whole World Economic Forum has been about. And it's to bring in all these world leaders and promise other people you get to rub shoulders with them. So you come in, you, you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for him per, you know, per year to be able to come to his little Davos conferences. And he's been promising access. And that's really why I think Gates and Soros became attracted because he had access to all the all world leaders, basically. Uh, and that access is very, very profound. Uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, he basically installed in the IMF and then he moved her to the head of the European Central Bank. And then you have, and she's on his board of directors. And then the head of the IMF, he puts in another board of directors. The head of the, I, of the, of the entire EU was also on his board. Um, he stood up and bragged about how he's infiltrated governments around the world in Canada, a number of people, uh, Friedland, uh, you know, Trudeau, all these people are connected to the World Economic Forum and it is pushing his economic theories. And, and which are, uh, and, and just so people, which you disagree with, you've said they're not going to work. It, this is cuckoo time, right? Yeah, I mean, look. <clears throat> He, he actually does have a, a statue of Lenin on the shelf in his office. <laughs> I can confirm that. Um, uh, Karl Schwab. Yes. Uh, I mean, most of you get with academics and economics, they tend to be left. Um, mainly because they don't like laissez-faire or Adam Smith because they basically did investigations and, and said, okay, fine, the, the economy is far too complex for a government to really get involved in. Uh, and so the, the leftists want to believe that the business cycle is not inevitable, but they can control it. And so, I mean, even Keynes was, you know, um, a leftist to some degree. And before he died, he even admitted that his theories were wrong. And he said, I hope he's, he had spent his whole life arguing against the invisible hand of Adam Smith. And he actually said he hoped that Britain would be saved by the invisible hand. Um, <clears throat> so these people try to control the economy and they can't because they don't understand it. And, and I would recommend a movie. It's called Mr. Jones. And it's all about uh, Stalin and how communism failed. And, and just, you know, look at it this way. If, if you've ever been to the DMV, you can see the quality of the people there and how annoying it is. All right. They confiscated all the property uh, in Russia. All right. The farmers were thrown out, etc. Now you have somebody like at the DMV deciding what to plant and when. I mean, no experience in this stuff. And so the entire crop just failed. So then Stalin stole it from Ukraine. And that's why the Ukrainians hate the Russians so much, because 7 million of them died because of Stalin. 
And that's what the movie's about, that the New York Times was trying to hide the starvation because they were pro-communism. And, you know, the London Financial Times is the same way. I mean, it's, it's just pathetic. Uh, but, you know, the, the problem with communism is that it just, it does not work, period. Um, I mean, I was invited to China uh, to help them become capitalists. And, and something may sound very simplistic. But I was taken to a facility and, and they had hundreds of people there downloading the entire internet. And I brought, it was brought into a room and they basically were tracking everything in the country. But unlike the Russians, they were not interfering. They were just monitoring it. And there were 249 varieties of tea and I had no idea of that many varieties of tea in China. Um, and they were dumbfounded that this one tea would sell for like a dollar here, but five dollars over there or whatever. And I said, okay, fine, but where is it coming from? And they said, here. I said, well, the first thing you have is transportation costs. And they go, oh, really? I said, yes. You know? And then somebody's going to pay more for something because they think it's better. And uh, under communism, the why it failed because if it was a dollar here, it was the dollar over there, even if it cost you 10 bucks to get it there. Uh, it was economically not feasible. And uh, so, I mean, that's basically what Schwab continues to support. He thinks that, it, you know, we can do it and just do it better this time. And it doesn't work. Uh, it, it will fail. And what he doesn't realize is that Marx was able to sell the idea for the Russian Revolution. Why? Because where serfdom ended in Europe in the 14th century, it continued in Russia and it wasn't abolished until 1861, about the same time we abolished slavery in the United States. So um, the people own nothing. And so saying, well, let's go get all the aristocrats, they got to hold all the land and everything, at least made sense. I mean, these people had nothing. They couldn't buy anything because they had no wealth. All right. So uh, the communist revolution was completely different at that stage in the game. Here, people own their houses. They own their cars. They, they save money for their kids' education um, and, you know, and for their retirement. I mean, we have things. Uh, and Schwab's idea is, oh, you give up everything, you'll own nothing, and you'll be happy. It's it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Let's, but he has the connections. Let's fast forward to the economy. You talked about, I want you to explain this, about what you're seeing, because you're worried, obviously, you asked to be on to talk about this. At the very least, we do have right now, not waiting for it, we have financial nuclear war. How bad is this going to get explained? There, there's no... <clears throat> return at this stage in the game uh, and it, it's very nice to uh, I mean even Henry Kissinger said in 2014 you know against you know Obama when he was demonizing starting the whole demonizing uh, theory of, of Putin and he said he said look the only reason they're demonizing Putin is because they don't have a policy and it's true once you it, just think of it as a personal argument. I mean, if, if you at least argue with somebody, there's points going back and forth. If you don't reach an agreement, then it just kind of bursts. That's it. You leave and you're no longer friends. All right. This is the same way. You don't start here. Oh, he's, uh, you know, he's evil. He's a madman. You, there's no place to negotiate. I mean, how can you possibly negotiate anything here? Uh, and that's the problem. If you think he's just a madman, that's it. So why talk to him? Well, just that's, the, that's the propaganda. What they don't do is your historical present. What Putin wants is to, he wants the same deal that he had before. That's Look, what, he, that's what it, he wants. No nukes, no NATO. Don't put nukes on our border. That's what, the, that's what NATO would be, nukes on the border. Exactly. I mean, it'd be the same thing as uh, when Russia tried sticking nukes in Cuba. So, so economic, back to this, how bad, well, right now we don't have to worry about nuclear war for the moment. 
But how bad is this financial thing? Wheat's eleven dollars a bushel. I mean, I'm a farm boy in Missouri, and I talked my farmer into planting it, and I said, "Hey, it's five fifty a bushel. He said, you want to plant? Because a lot of farmers don't like to mess with it now. Hey, oh, you want to plant it? Okay, okay five. Yeah, you're sure, fine. I bet she's glad he doubled. It's eleven bucks uh, on spot price. So, I mean, we're we're going to get some bad mamma jamma inflation, are we not? Yes. I mean, look. Um and it kind of comes back to what I said before. I think we got the worst possible crop of world leaders uh, ever, uh, probably in human history. I mean, they don't think beyond their nose. Just take the COVID cr nonsense. All right. Oh, okay, fine. We'll, we'll lock down and social distancing, etc. New York City has seven days worth of food supply. All right. Don't you realize the trucks do have to move around and get things to people? Uh, they have disrupted the entire supply chain. Inflation starts going up and it's like, oh, gee, you know, then they want to investigate companies. I mean, the same thing with the, the ECB. I mean, I warned them, do not move to negative interest rates. They did, you know, and yeah. 2014. They have not been able to get out of it. What is it, 18 trillion? Well, they don't even understand. Um, you, you, By going negative, you have punished all the people that retired and saved money and expected to be able to earn interest to, for a living. That's all gone. All right, pension funds. You know, you had laws over there that vary between 70% to 100% that had to be invested in government bonds. Then you take the government bond rate to negative, and then all of a sudden you got all the pension funds insolvent. And they go, oh, gee, I didn't think about that. I mean, it, it's just mind boggling. It really is that the, the level of stupidity that we have on the world stage of, of governments, they make these actions, they sound great. Uh, it's like Lindsey Graham, you know, oh, stand up and, and somebody in the Kremlin should, should assassinate uh, Putin, really, we might end up with something far worse, another Stalin. <laughs> uh, you know, they, they take that as a as a an act of war. I mean, you you have to be careful what the heck you're saying here. Yeah, they think they're they're dealing with some um, some tin horn dictator from Grenada or something. And not that the Grenada is a bad place, but I'm just saying this. These, these people have hypersonic uh, torpedoes. I, I know. I, mean, I can't I, believe what is coming out of these people's mouths. I really can't. Um, I, I could be a... Listen, I could take Lindsey Graham's place because I, I, I wouldn't say anything that stupid. And I'm not that smart, but I... You know, wow. Uh, so how bad... So for the average person, what's, what's he going to see? I mean, is he going to see massive inflation, food shortages, uh, uh, you know, gas prices at eight bucks a gallon? What are we going to see? Yeah, I mean, all this stuff now, I mean, Russia supplies about 30% of the world's wheat. Now, most of it goes to North Africa and um, Southeast Asia. So you're looking at food prices, shortages over there. Now, as this develops, um, that's one of the number one reasons for civil unrest. People can't feed their children, etc. They can't afford to live. I mean, all this is is a complete, complete mess. Um, well, be meanwhile over here, the, the, food prices. I mean, they we're talking about complete chaos. And meanwhile, over here, the price goes up. You know, those little loaves of bread you get at Outback. You know, for free. Uh, can I have another one? Sure. Yeah, fine. Uh, that'll be three bucks. I mean, that, that's going away, right? Oh, look, I went to a, a, a Mexican restaurant the other night that I, I like, and if you're out of chips, they come, they keep filling it up. Now they go, well, that's $3 for another basket. It's okay. Um, it, it, this is what you're you're seeing. It's just, it's, it's mind-boggling that we have such incompetence in government. Uh, I mean, absolutely everywhere. I mean, it, it just... It's I've never and I've worked with governments, as you know, for 40 years. I've never seen it this bad ever. Uh, you used the word chaos. Explain what the chaos is going to look like in America and anywhere else. Well, you get it will manifest in, in uh, civil unrest. You, it will manifest in 
uh, in separatist movements around the world. Um, I mean, you're talking about, uh, you know, Biden's got to 2024. I mean, you know, I, you know, this is just the first year of our computer, which came up with a panic cycle for 2022. I mean, we're into this thing for like eight weeks. I mean, look at what's happened already. Um, I just can't wait for the end of it, you know. <laughs> but then our, our war cycle is, uh, we're just about ready to put out a report on that. And the computer has come up with, you know, 2023 just going off the charts. Um, and, and you have to understand one thing. I mean, uh, one guy, oh, you know, you know, you know, you think Putin should win. I said, if he does not win, we are in really serious trouble because that would be such a devastating blow to to Russia. Do you really think he's going to allow Russia to collapse uh, that over Ukraine? No way. That's when you start pushing buttons. Um, but I suspect. Well, wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you. So. <laughs> If it looks like he's going to lose, he's going to use those hypersonic torpedoes and the underwater uh, nuclear weapons that circle the globe with a nuclear you know, reactor on them, well, forever. Uh, he's going to use his hypersonic missiles. You're saying if he loses, uh, it's doctor, uh, 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 it's, yeah. it's nuclear war. You're saying if he loses, it's nuclear war. Because you're talking about uh, Russia is feels that it has been demoralized. Uh, you're talking about the, the pride of a nation. I mean, this is, these are serious issues here. I mean, the egotistical, perhaps, but um, you know that's basically what you also drum up patriotism over. You know. Uh, you know, America first. Well, it's, over there, it's Russia first. You know, it's. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, you you have to realize. I think that, <clears throat> given some, you know, the stupid, basic, you know, comments that came from Biden and Harris, perhaps, and giving the benefit of the doubt here, perhaps Zelensky thought that he would have military support, even though he was not part of NATO. He asked for troops, denied. He then asked for jets, denied. He then asked for no-fly zone, denied. They know if they provide any support like that whatsoever, it is World War III. So, so, so Ukraine's going to get flattened. I don't know why Zelensky has a couple of neurons Okay, stop, 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 stop. We'll be neutral. We won't have nukes. We he should have. I mean, why I, I, don't they stop it? Because they're going to flatten Ukraine. They already took control of the biggest nuclear plant, right, in Europe. Well, I, I think another thing that people may not be aware of um, and <clears throat> is that there is a massive gas field underneath Crimea. And... <clears throat> And there are energy companies that want uh, Crimea back, and they feel that if they oh. got it, they'd oh. be able to push, you know, uh, Russia out of supplying gas to Europe. That's that's a dream. What? But you have him basically saying, "No, we want Crimea back." Uh, that's part of the 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 issue here, uh, and. Um, I mean, I've been over there. I mean, uh, you know, it's Crimea is is ninety eight percent Russian. Period. Uh, I had a Uf Ukrainian friend, and she would basically said that they only went down there to the beach once in a while. Uh, I mean, it, it was it's always been Russian, you know, and it was only allocated to U Ukraine to be managed under the Soviet Union. That was it. But. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know if if Zelensky is out of his mind, if he's just been uh, bribed. But I, I know Ukrainians, and they they are very concerned that they wouldn't have voted for this. Uh, and 
it's one thing if you really thought you could defend your country against Russia, so oh, he can't. Lord. You know, he's been you know asking everybody for help. I mean, he should basically just say, "Look, this is it. Take Donetsk, uh, Crimea. We we surrender that." Yes. Stop flattening the rest of Ukraine. It's a big country. It's bigger than France. It's huge. I, I just I just don't understand that logic. It's it's uh, it, it just seems to be I don't think he he is thinking straight or, you know, some people think he's been bribed and, and offered a golden parachute if he fails. I mean, you don't destroy a whole country like this when you have no means of actually <laughs> defending it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, OK, so no fly zone yet. Uh, troops yet. Uh, jets yet. Okay, so no, not going to get any of that. So it looks like NATO's not going to step in. Paul Kirk Roberts got this right until he, a couple of weeks ago. He said NATO's not going to get in, and they're not. Okay. So, so here we got a financial war. So we're back to we have financial nuclear war right now, and so that's what you can count on. Now, you don't think we're going to have nuclear war, thing. I hope you're right. But the financial war is here. Tell me how bad it's going to get for the Joe Schmo. Are you going to get? You're going to see ten dollars a gallon gas. Lay out a scenario for us. That's look. That's entirely possible by the time you get into next year. Wait, 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 wait. Ten. Stop. I, I want to get this back. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But this, you know, sue, 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 sue. You're saying that we could get ten dollar gas in 2023. You're you're talking about disrupting the entire system. You now have. Um, Brain dead, you know, politicians uh, in the West uh, who have uh, been on this climate change agenda, and the problem with it is that they've been only interested in shutting down fossil fuels before you have any kind of an alternative here. And let me get an answer. You think ten dollar gas in 2023 is a possibility? Oh, it's a possibility. Yes, I mean, I. I <laughs> We'll put out a report on, on what the actual top price would be, but um, it's certainly in the area of eight to eight to ten. Uh, <laughs> and you have to understand if you've shut down fossil fuel production to begin with, all right, and then you you take these uh, sanctions and everything else on the world on top of that. This is it's like you know Murphy's law: whatever can go wrong goes wrong. I, I, uh, I, now I know why you want to come on. Uh, I mean, this is, a, I mean, you just take a look at that and then look at the price. A wheat, corn is seven seventy five. It may be up now. I don't know. Wheat's 11. Uh, beans are near a record at 16 and change. The record's 17 and change. I mean, you, so you think the price of everything because of these idiotic actions, everything. We're in, uh, look, I, I, from the very beginning, from 2020, we said this is the commodity cycle and inflation is going to take off and our computer doesn't say it's it's done until at least 2024. Um, and then we look at the war cycle and the computer is projecting serious problems next year uh, in 2023, particularly the first quarter. Uh, and it also came up with a panic cycle in politics this year, which was the first time it did that since 1933. Um, I mean, look, this isn't, you know, my personal opinion stuff. I mean, people uh, have been relying upon our computer for many, many years. And um, I mean, as you know, I fought against the, the CIA that wanted it, you know, they wanted me to build it for them. And then when I said we were just, we'll run studies for you, you know, they arrogantly said, no, we have to own it. And I said, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I'm going to come back to the pan. I want you to explain when you say pan, uh, we got the war cycle in 2023 and we got the commodity cycle. That's pretty obvious. Uh, in gold and silver, wheat, uh, oil, nat gas, that's all part of the cycle, right? Yes. It's all going to boop, goodbye. Okay, so I want to hear the the panic cycle in 2022. And we had another a Democrat congressman, and there is a law that says if you have campaign funds, bribes, uh, and you don't run a, a campaign, you can just take them with you tax-free. Paul Ryan did that. I think he got, I think reportedly he got $10 million. So this is the 31st Democrat 
that has now said, nope, not running for re-election. Bye-bye, I'm leaving. What do you, what, explain the panic cycle. Is it, does it mean that uh, even Democrats won't vote for Democrats because they're killing the, their world? Yeah, I think so. I mean, really? uh, I mean, you think Democrats are, that we, this is too, whoa, 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 stop. No, this is crazy. No, we're not voting for this. You think Democrats are going to do that? Yeah, you have to understand something about politics here. Um, I can run for, for election and promise everything under the moon. Then I go down to Washington, and then what do they say? We don't care about that. You will vote this way, and it must be according to party line. So you see all these votes, and it's always party line. So I, you know, I can say, look, vote for me, and I'll, I'll do this X, Y, Z, and it's impossible for me to do it. Um, this is what is wrong with, with a representative Republican-type government, all right? They, it's party politics, and so... Uh, but there's not going to be... I, I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't I, mean to interrupt you, but there's not going to be much of a Democrat party left if nobody votes for them, not even Democrats. The, they've gone too far to the, to the, to the left. I mean, I know people that were Democrats and they, they voted, but they didn't vote for this stuff. You know, they didn't vote for, they didn't know that, you know, you're, you're talking about $5 a gallon for, for gasoline. I mean, they said, wait a minute, you know. Um, they, like I said, they, you know, did Biden stand up and, and really identify everything that he was really going to do and what the cost was going to be? I mean, he just did a State of the Union address and said, promised everything under the moon and then said, oh, but if you earn less than 400000 you won't pay a penny more in tax. I mean, fine, you know, you'll pay 20 to 20% more in, in cost of living on everything else. Uh, it, it's just, it, you know, we have to get rid of this form of government, really. Um, we got to go back to more of a, a direct democracy and because this is just total insanity. I mean, these people can run and promise whatever they want, and then they get there and they do the opposite. Um, that That's really why, um, you know, when Trump got elected, I mean, I went down to D.C. and they were, even Republicans were, were upset. You know, oh, this is a fluke. And I explained to them, I said, you realize they voted for him because it was a vote against you. Uh. And they didn't want to hear that. Oh, no, no. I said, it, it could have been anybody. It didn't matter. Our computer projected this 30 years in advance, all right? Um, 2016 was the, going to be the first time, basically, you would be, get a non-politician as president. And it was, it was absolutely correct, all right? But that's the level of corruption, and it's on both sides. And, and, and that was Trump's problem. When he said oh, he's going to drain the swamp, he didn't realize... You know, the swamp is both sides of the, of the aisle. It's not just, you know, one side. Uh, so you had Democrats, you know, against them, and you had Republicans against them. Uh, and everybody under the sun was trying to stab them in the back. Oh, that's a great explanation. That is a fabulous explanation. Go use that. I mean, it's the truth. I mean, that, Oh, yeah, no, no, I get it. You know the truth you know, when you hear it. You boing, direct, ding, 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 right in the middle of the target. Um, so what would the common guy do i mean I, I i was i was doing my mom's taxes in the middle of uh, last year i heard larry summers who's you know a big time democrat and he would say oh no 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 the inflation is here and i'm thinking whoa well, former treasury secretary larry summers is contradicting and tra basically trashing the democrat dreamscape oh no no big so i usually get a few you know six seven eight hundred dollars worth of supplies for my mom's hundred acre farm right i, I run it for her and uh I went and bought everything, filters, oil, uh, uh, antifreeze. I bought everything I could. And I'm doing the tag. Well, I got $2,500 worth of supply. I usually have $800 worth. So is, is that what people should do? Start stocking up on, well, everything? Yes. I mean, what you have to understand is we are, um, this is why Keynesian economics is failing. The whole idea was that, okay, fine, we raise interest rates. And that will stop the speculation and, and bring down things. The problem is that we're not dealing with speculation. We're dealing with shortages. So the more you raise interest rates to try and reduce spending, uh, it sorry, it raises the cost of everything. 
So it, Keynesian economics does not work when we're in a shortage, which is what we have. All right. And, it and that's is, why prices go up, because they're in short supply. Exactly. And, ah. and what's happening, look, even when I go to shop, all right, sometimes the store is out of one thing when, okay, can't buy it today. But if I see something else, okay, fine. I buy extra. Why? Because it might not be there tomorrow. <laughs> It, like uh, wheat uh, and these ships being sunk and hitting sea mines, and who's going to send their fifteen million dollar ship to go pick up grain? I did you no 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 we're not doing that no 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 oh, no 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 we're not doing that. I mean and then it becomes in well short it's eleven dollars a bushel because it's in short supply. Yeah, I mean it, you're that's what real inflation is about, and 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 what I was saying is that it's shortages. So raising interest rates will only make it worse. It's not going to solve inflation. But that's what Jim Bullard, uh, St. Louis Fed president, we should retract the uh, accommodation, which if you're going to put money out there and try to get a real uh, buyer, then the rates are going to go sky high. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it, you're, you've crossed the, the Rubicon here. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, you, you have people, the inflation here is that people are going to buy things more than what they normally do because it's only going to cost them more tomorrow. Okay. Uh, wow. Uh, what, what inflation... What John Williams, who I love at shadowstats.com, you know, he computes things the way it was done in 1980 without all the, you know, the garbage. He says the average, the average is around 15%. That's going to go higher, he thinks. Uh, what, what do you think? Are your computer models showing some type of average inflation uh, higher than 15% the rest of this oh, year? Yeah. We'll, we'll probably uh -huh. reach 25 by 24. Um, you're, you're, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're going to get, I want to make sure I get this right so you don't, hey, you put words in my mouth. You think we're going to get 25% inflation by 2024? In in, in goods, yes. Uh, you're, you're finding uh, shortages and that raises prices up dramatically. Uh, I just had a friend of mine this morning uh, tell me about, you know, the price of, of, of bread in, in London. He said it's up 20% already. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this, this is reality here. Uh, we have to understand that we've got the worst possible group of world leaders in power. And it's and their fault. It, it is. It's all their fault. Um you know, it, it, I, I can't even make an, an excuse for Camilla Harris telling Ukraine to join um, NATO on February 20th. Don't you understand that violated the Budapest Agreement? I mean, I, 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 I just, I don't know. I mean, some people are saying, oh, maybe this was intentional to create a war. Um, you know, to help the Great Reset. Maybe, I, I, I just, you know, are these people this absolute stupid? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to uh, throw you... I, I've never seen it, that, you know, world leaders this completely off the, off the planet. There is a, a new study out, and I'm just, I didn't, I'm not trying to trip you. If you don't know anything about it, we'll just move on. Okay, so I'm not, this is not a trip up, but this is a big deal because all of these vaccines. So, uh, uh, Lund University, a uh, Swedish study, says that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, and, they, and the CDC, oh, this won't happen. This will never happen. And uh, Pfizer said, oh, no, no, that doesn't, no, no, it'll just go away. It won't be there. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine goes into liver cells and is converted to DNA, according to Swedish researchers at Lund University. Dr. Peter McCullough, a heavyweight cardiologist, uh, epidemiologist, internist, uh, says, and let me just read this to you, and this is the science and not the political science or the science fiction, is uh, he says that uh, the Swedish study's findings have enormous implications of permanent chromosomal change and long-term constitutive spike synthesis, driving uh, the pathogenesis of a whole new genre of chronic disease. And I think it's kind of weird that uh, Socrates spotted a big human die-off uh, this year. Uh, and I know you it's hard to pin that down. Could be war, could be famine, could be, well, uh, you know, these shots. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, is, does that? is that something that may play into this human die-off that you spotted? Cliff High also spotted this die-off too in his research, which I know has nothing to do with Socrates. 
Uh, anyway, anyway, are the vaccines going to be part of, of the die-off? I mean, so people are going to be pissed. Perfect. When they find out they've been poisoned, I think they're going to be pissed. Oh, yeah. No, look, I've heard from a number of reliable sources that they, they felt that this was um, reducing your the natural immunity to other diseases. Uh, your immune system is, is declining. And they basically said that after the third shot in particular. But um, the American Heart Association came out and, and said it's, it's creating heart attacks. And Twitter, you know, said, oh, their advice is unsafe. Um, so I guess Twitter has more heart surgeons than the American Heart Association. Uh, uh, and then you have <clears throat> the WHO supported by the Gates administration and the Rockefeller, um, both of them now trying to push out a global uh, international, you know, COVID passport. Um, and it's, you have to wonder what is going on here. And I think it's really just uh, for control. And then they're going to say, oh, well, we, we're going to, we get, maybe Russians are going to infiltrate us, so we'll need this international passport to help that. I mean, they just make up stuff, but, I mean, as you go. Do, do you think that the VAX are going to be part of the big die-off that Socrates spotted in 2022? I don't know if that's the case, but I think it will, um, at least the reliable sources that I, I think are, are legit, says it will lower your immune system. Uh, does that mean it's a, a die-off or you just get, you know, more sickly? I mean, it's, you know, that's hard to say. I'm not a doctor, so I, I, I can't really okay. go. All right, in. all right, enough. That's good. That's good. Um, uh, anything you want to say in closing? Any, any words of wisdom for the people watching this? Because I am behind the scenes when I, you know, go and just put you up. I'm like going, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm like 25% uh, inflation. Uh, wheat's going higher. All this stuff's going. Uh, the, everything's going. Oh my gosh! Any words of wisdom for the common well, I person? I think you should. Besides stockpiling some food, I mean cans of food, I think would be good. Um, I mean even you know rice and pasta lasts for for a couple of years. Uh, but I really suggest that you you know keep some cash on hand. Um, I mean because this financial war can also turn into uh, you know, cyber attacks on banks and things of this nature, uh, power grids. Um, so I, I, I would, you know, recommend physical good old fashioned cash, uh, and, you know, keep some on hand because that it may, may come in very handy, particularly if the power grids go down and things of this nature, then, uh, you know, credit cards or cryptocurrency or any of that's not going to work. Good old fashioned cash, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to, to bring up your books. I mean, I, I do have people, uh, most people, about 90, 99% love you for coming on. You're an insider. And they're like, he's an insider. How else will you find out what these evil bastards are thinking if you don't have somebody at the table? And, you know, they, I, I'm sure they hate you. Uh, but they put up with you because you're smart. And even though they want to hear what you have to say. And, of course, when you do a book like this, which could have been written this week, and you cartoon character two of the nasty players, th this isn't like, oh, oh, I love your book. You made me look like a goon, Soros and Gates. Oh, yeah, I love it. This could have been written this week. It's on your website. And the other thing, and a, a very predictive book, and this could have also been written this week, and that's this. And they're very – it's a huge book. It's very heavy. Uh, you go, gave it to me to hold up. Man, manipulating the world economy. It's on your website, which I'm sure they hate you basically blowing the whistle on this. I mean, you're supposed to say, yes, having nothing and being broke and uh, you'll be happy. That's a great idea. Of course, you say that's idiotic and communism doesn't work. And that's what this is. Well, so, I, they, I've been battling against these guys for a long time. They, they must hate. Let me, uh, can I just ask you? They must hate you. Oh, when they see you, they must go, oh, yes, hello, uh, Martin. I mean, they must hate you. Oh, we got to put up your crap they, because you're so smart that we at least want to hear what you have to say. I mean, isn't that right? Am I wrong? I think basically they now want to know what Socrates has to say, yes. Um, and I, 
You nailed but, this. You were telling them for years. This is not going to work. This isn't going to work. The bond debt. You can't make it negative. This is not going to. I've been listening to you for years. You got to make the, all the debt of the European all be one like the U. This is not going to. This is going to destroy the bond. The eighteen well, trillion. You have to understand. You've been telling them this. I, and oh, and by the way, Socrates says I should move to Florida. <laughs> Ding! Another direct hit in the bullseye. So. Um. Well, anyway, listen, I like one thing. they had always uh, people judge others by themselves. So they have been bribing people kind of like Schwab getting, you know, charging people and to be able to rub shoulders. Uh, they think that everything is a connection. So they've always been trying to get me to join because when <clears throat> the computer's been right and they fail and they have failed every time. All right. Um, I had done a, 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 a we had a conference in London in, in 1998 and I stood up and I said, OK, fine. I give Russia 30 days and it's going to collapse. And long -term that's capital, a long -term management. capital management crisis. Yeah. LTC in there. Uh, and that and I didn't realize it. But at the time, there was a guy from the London Financial Times and he stuck it on the, on the front page of the second section there. So it, when it collapsed they the way they look at it is that i just have more influence than they do oh because i've got more clients um and no, they, not that I, you were right but you were just lucky you were kind of yeah, juiced it i mean you front ran the trade we actually had you know uh the equivalent of 50 percent of the u.s national debt under contract with multinationals so they they felt that we just had more power than they did and they were bribing politicians and stuff like that. So it would always come back to, you know, I just have more influence. That's it. So they've hated me for that. I think now they're beginning to start to realize that maybe the computer is, is pretty damn good because this thing is, has picked everything from Trump winning Brexit, you know, LTM crash. I mean, 87 crash, you name it, it's, it's done just about everything. What's the next big turn or next big thing happening? We got panic in the in the chaos in uh, political. That's panic with the Democrats, correct? Yes, I okay. mean look, you you can possibly see uh, the Democratic Party even eventually split. Oh, um, and this is not unusual. I mean, it, it was the Federalist against the uh, Republican Democratic Party of of Thomas Jefferson, which split, became the Democrats and and the uh, Republicans, uh, and and you ended up with a progressive party in, in the late you know 19th century. I mean, so parties do split, and you had the tea, you know the you know the, the Tea Party uh, emerge you know a couple decades ago. I mean, so all these things are are very dynamic, and within the Democrats themselves, like I say, I have friends, and they absolutely hate AOC and her agenda. And they're uh, Democrats. And they're Democrats, yeah. I mean, so you have conservative Democrats, you got middle of the road, and then you got extreme left wings. Uh, and the same thing in Republicans. And that, was, so, hold on, and that's the, and that's your, what you're reading as the panic. The panic is with the Democrat Party on the, that side. It's, it, yeah, it, it's the confidence in government has basically collapsed. So you're looking at just like what you were reading there on on uh, the vaccines. Uh, the worst possible thing for government to have done was get involved, because um, I can tell you, after working with politicians for 40 years, they will never come out and say, "Oops, sorry, I made a mistake." So. To them, they will defend these vaccines to the absolute last person on earth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that's that's what's wrong. The government should never have gotten involved in that. Uh, once they did, you know, you, it's it's a disaster because you can't trust anything they do. Yeah, yeah. And then 2023, you're you're tripping the war cycle. Big red warning it, thing. Yeah, I don't see how this is. I. I I put out a my version of the solution uh, out of this crisis, <clears throat> um, hoping that maybe one of them will actually propose it. But 
Mm-hmm. I'm just basically taking the Budapest Agreement and saying, look, you know, um, Zelensky has to promise, all right, okay, no more NATO. That's it. It's cut off. And no nukes? And he has to also secede, you know, uh, Donbass and also Crimea. You know, surrender all claims to Crimea. All right. In return, Europe can simply then say, okay, fine, uh, Ukraine will be entered into the EU. That will allow Ukrainians free travel throughout Europe without visas. All right. I mean, it would be beneficial to their people. Uh, and then you've, you've got the Russian sections off, and, and what the propaganda doesn't want to talk about is when Yanukovych was there, he was putting in a language law that said Russian and Ukrainian were official languages of Ukraine. Uh, with Zelensky, it's only Ukrainian uh, language is, is official and Russian language is banned. So why are you then trying to hold on to Donbass and, and Crimea? Um, it, it just, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, so let those regions go. That gets Putin out of there. Um, Before and he flattens the whole country. Exactly. And it would be much beneficial to the Ukrainian people. Uh, and just swear, okay, fine, we're going to uphold the Budapest Agreement. We're, we're not going to be part of NATO and no nukes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, inflation is uh, it's not going to go down and then back up in 24. You're talking inflation just constantly being and rising and 25% by well, there's, 20. There's going to be ups and downs. I mean, it's, everything functions in a cycle. But Socrates, 25% by 2024. Yeah, we're looking at... at, at very, very high levels of inflation in all these, particularly in the commodity side. So okay. it could be higher than 25%. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 that's just an average type thing. Um, but we'd have to look at, you know, individual, com- you know, issues. I mean, if you get even crude oil getting uh, above like a really the $100 level on a monthly sustainable closing basis, then... You're looking at that running up and can hit 200. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Gold. I got to ask you about gold. I know you're not a huge fan of gold, because, but wow, you. <laughs> if you look at all the world leaders and if you just take your logic and your logic is gold goes up when people lose their faith in government and we have a bunch yeah. of income poops on every, Canada and, and uh, you know, the U.S. and uh, uh, France and all these idiots uh, and cause it all this problem. You said they all this. Oh, the problems are caused by the leadership in the West. Um, it, is gold going to go up because of all these idiots that aren't going to leave office anytime soon? Oh yeah, I mean it's you know it it's not going to go up in proportion to inflation. You know it's you have to understand uh, gold goes up basically when the confidence of government declines, and I mean even going into 1980. Uh, People that say there was always inflation. No, that's just not true. Uh, and gold went from 200 to 400 <clears throat> by you know December 1979 from 1976. Carter. When, when Russia invaded Afghanistan, <clears throat> then gold doubled. All right. Got so it. it wasn't the inflation. It was the geopolitical events again. Um, the only problem with gold is that you can't hop on a plane and fly someplace with twenty, you know, twenty thousand dollars worth. Right, right. Uh, there was a woman who just flew in from Canada to San Francisco. She had thirty-two thousand dollars in gold, and they confiscated. Um, so, but if you're living in Missouri and you're not traveling, or you're if living you're not in- traveling, that's fine. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's <clears throat> the mobility of of it is probably uh, seriously impaired. Okay. How about the dollar? Is the dollar going to uh, vanish or, you know, I mean, a pal is saying we can have two world reserve currencies is, or is it just going to get severely uh, torched, devalued? No, uh, actually it ends up being the other way. Um, so the dollar could, so holding cash is going to be a good thing. Yeah, what well, you have to understand is that <clears throat> why did Roosevelt confiscate gold in 1933? or 34, you know, to begin with. 
That's because all of Europe defaulted. And the capital came here and pushed the dollar up so high. Our politicians back then didn't understand capital flows. And so that's where the protectionism came in. Uh, they put, you know, tariffs on foreign uh, imports because they were, you know, cheap, cheaper than American. And <clears throat> FDR had this, uh, they called him the, the agricultural uh, <laughs> economist. He came in and he said, look, you have to devalue the dollar. It's the only way to, to get out of this. And he did. We confiscated the gold first at $20.67. Then he devalued the dollar and made gold 35. All right. So it's it's the, the capital coming here that pushes the dollar up. All right. The dollar is probably going to reach a, an important high against the, the Chinese one most likely this year. All right. Uh, but if you end up with war in, in Europe, the, the money's coming here. So, yeah, the, yeah. The, you know, it, it's it's just that the United States, you get these people, they only look at U.S. debt and, oh, this is horrible, blah, blah, blah. OK, well, do you think that the U.S. is is the only one? We're, we're the, in the best shape compared to everyone else. We have the best economy. Uh, compared to Europe or, or even in, in Asia. So uh, it, it's, you know, we're the prettiest of the three ugly sisters, as they say, that's all. Um, but the capital will concentrate here. Now, eventually it moves uh, into assets. So that's why you see real estate rising a lot, uh, all sorts of collectibles from coins and stamps. Uh, I think the first edition of, uh, what was it, uh, Spider-Man? comic book brought three and a half million dollars. I mean, I was like stunned with that one. But, um, uh, you know, so you see art, everything going up. So these are the tangible assets. That's capital coming in, trying to get off the grid. Because you don't want to necessarily leave everything in a bank. Uh, the bank can be easily seized. You get, you know, power grids, whatever, go down. Uh, cyber attacks. Uh, you know, you want to be at least a little bit more diversified. So people do have uh, tangible assets and that's everything from, um, you know, even stocks to real estate, um, but just not government bonds. Uh, interest rates, are interest rates going to go up or down? <clears throat> no, I, the Fed is in a position where if it doesn't raise interest rates, it's afraid it's going to be blamed for the inflation. Well, yeah. You know, Powell wants to raise rates a quarter of a point. That's going to yeah. do it. It's absolutely nothing. But you have to understand what's behind the curtain as well. China went to the Fed, and I can tell you, I don't know if it ever made the press, but <clears throat> China asked the Fed, please don't raise interest rates because they're going to affect the emerging markets. Um, the the problem with in China and and all these emerging markets is that China had even told its provinces not to borrow in dollars. And they told them not to, they didn't order them. Uh, you had real estate companies over there borrowing in dollars because they were cheaper. Interest rates were low. All right. And so as the dollar goes up, fine, the interest rate didn't rise, but they lost a ton of money on, on the currency movement. Uh, and you don't think rates are going to go up. You think they're not going to go up. He, He's going to have to raise rates just for um, appearance sake uh, because the Fed will be blamed. The politicians want to accept no blame for anything. Uh, they can spend whatever they want and then they just blame the Fed. Oh, you didn't solve the inflation from what we did. You know? How much will they raise them? They're going to raise them, but you have to understand that it's the private rates that are going to go up more than the official rate. The, the official rate is simply the what the government will pay on debt. And they're going to have to raise it uh, just to fight inflation, but also to attract money. Okay. Uh, and real estate. Will real estate, uh, because rates go up and private rates go up, will real estate uh, sell off, tank, whatever? It depends where you're at. Um, you uh, definitely see 
<clears throat> price is starting to come off a little bit in <clears throat> in California, New York, things of that nature. Uh, <clears throat> I think it will soften a little bit uh, in um, with concerns of the war and things of that nature, and you know by next year. But <clears throat> right now in Florida. Uh, yeah, the computer is right. I moved here six years ago, and yep. I, I, right now this the stats are 1,300 people per day are moving to Florida. So, uh, oh, oh, depending on, so the real estate isn't going to tank in Florida. Yeah, I mean, please go to the East Coast, you know, stay away from the West. I mean, traffic's already doubled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I came down here because it was nice. I mean, I could drive someplace to very quickly. Now it's like, oh, my God. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, I'm going to close up. Uh, thanks for spending all this time. Thanks for for offering to come on. Uh, that was a Hall of Fame stuff interview. Any other thing that Socrates is showing that, that, that you thought, wow, I didn't know that was going to happen. Uh, anything that you're seeing, anything you want to say in closing about Socrates? Now, other than, look, it's, it's a, the only fully functioning AI system in the world that actually works. Uh, it writes over a thousand reports per day. Nobody's in wow. there doing it. Um, and um, it's not my personal opinion. Sure. Well, uh, you know, it's. I don't think anybody can be as right as I've been over for, for decades. You know, your luck's got to run out at some point. You know, if you're doing it from your gut. Um, but anything that you see that Socrates has, it. Oh well, this is interesting. Do you have anything like that to close? Uh, not really. It just like okay. looks like a real chaotic uh, storm that we're going through, and and I just pray that we're not going to get seriously into into war but that is certainly looks more like uh people have to understand you got people saying oh you know putin's a mad man we should go in there and 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 fight him whatever send in troops do you really realize what's going on here i mean yeah. he's backed by china china just struck a friendly deal with north korea you got Iran that's going to come in. I mean, you got uh, Belarus that is now saying, okay, fine, since Ukraine is breaking the uh, Budapest Agreement, they're talking about uh, bringing in nukes. Uh, they were part of the, the agreement that they would have no nukes. So, I mean, this, this is just one giant mess. And, and you're talking about dividing the world significantly. Uh, North Korea has 1.5 million troops. Um, I mean, it, this is just crazy. I mean, you're, you're looking at uh, they could over, overwhelm uh, Japan and, and South Korea. I mean, you know, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Uh, and uh, one last thing, I, I would, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. You know, that the, uh, the State Department is uh, uh, Tony Blinken. Again, you know how I feel about that. They're threatening China that if you help Russia, we're going to have sanctions against you. Uh, is that more of the chaos, crazy, cuckoo time? Uh, what is that? You Not a smart play, on, I take it, where your head They put sanctions on us. Um, and say that again. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Say that they again. put sanctions on them. They put sanctions on us. And I would be pay attention. That honestly, I think you're going to start seeing China begin to liquidate U.S. Treasury debt, and uh, that will be serious because historically, if you're going to invade a country, you want to make sure you don't have any assets in the country. Oh, you're saying you're saying that China could invade us? No, not that they invade. Oh, they would attack us. Attack whatever you know. You're talking about even nuclear war or whatever. I mean, I don't think they're going to land troops on the shore. No, um, but if you end up in some sort of a war with the United States, then they're going to sell off all the U.S. debt. Uh, that's what that's that's what that's signaling. Never thought the big problem is going to be China. That in, eventually it's going to be the biggest problem is going to be China. It's China and Russia will combine. There's no question about it. 